Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. This is a kind of standalone episode talking particularly about UV editing. It's a fairly long video because I'm trying to go into real depth with the whole UV editing process and to give you some real insight into the thought process behind marking seams and mapping out your UVs. Do check out my playlist on UV editing for beginners. That will help you with the basics and this is a more advanced look. If you like what I do and want to make a full game ready character, then take a look at my character course and take a look in the description for my other courses, other playlists on this channel for lots of educational content. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again, follow the links in the description. Okay, so we're back to where we were before we did the automatic unwrap with Smart UV Project. And with my object selected, I'll go up to the UV editing workspace and I've got my UV editor on the left hand side and my model on the right. Now remember this is mirrored so we only need to unwrap on one side and that will copy across to the other. But before we actually do the unwrap we will combine them together. Once again you can unwrap with a mirror on it means your UVs will be right on top of each other and you can save lots of space especially if you're using really small texture sizes. But we're not going to do that because we want to put some shading in places like this on one side where the flintlock is but not on the other. Also you tend to get a bit of a seam down the middle and you can't highlight one side without highlighting the other. So it's a good idea not to if you can get away with it. Okay, so we can go into our object and think about where we want to mark seams. The most obvious places are where the texture changes, where you've got kind of a different object. So this wooden handle here and this metal barrel here are different textures, so we should separate them with a seam. So I'll zoom in here. You want to be in edge mode, so two on my keyboard to go to edge mode up here. And I should be able to alt right click and select loop cuts around to certain points. When you select a loop cut like this, it will go all the way up to a point where it goes into a pole. A pole is where there's anything but four edges going into that vertex. So here you can see it's three. These ones all have four edges going into them, so it will select that edge loop. So I can go around, just hold down alt and shift and I'll be reselecting these edge loops up to the end here. So I'll go all the way down and around. And obviously it's stopped there because the mirror means I don't have to do the other side. I can then press Control E to go to the edge menu. You can also find the edge menu up here, it's the same. Control E is the shortcut. And there is Mark Seam. And you should see that turn a sort of ready color. And that will give us a seam across that area. So other good places, probably in here, in here as well, but remember it won't go through a pole like this, so we have to do it again there, down to the end there, and down to the end there. So Control E, Mark Seam. Now if you make a mistake, and let's say I grab this and accidentally marked a seam, well Control E and there's a clear seam, so we can clear that. Okay, so I'm going to go around my object and find all these areas where I think there's an obvious split, so here's one. I can select this one as well doesn't have to be joined, that one there, and press Control E, Mark Seam. Now we don't have to worry too much about our seams because we're painting onto this, so the seams won't be too obvious. And what we want to reduce is stretching, which I'll talk about a bit later. So I'll leave some points so we can talk about that in a moment. But I'll just generally go around marking seams in different places where the objects kind of break up naturally. It's a bit of an awkward shape in here, but I'm just cutting off where that wooden section is and where the bolt is. Okay, so there's some obvious places there, and we might think that's enough so we can unwrap and just see what it looks like. Now try and remember what I need to do before I unwrap. So what I need to do is go into object mode with tab, press N on my keyboard, and make sure I've got uniform scale, which I haven't. So control A and apply the scale. Now that's all set to one and we're okay. But remember you've got these objects here as well. So control A, scale, and now they're all set to one. You can select them all at the same time and press control A and set the scale, that's fine. Okay, so when I'm unwrapping, I need to select all the objects. So the flint lock as well here. I need to go into edit mode and select everything. I'll bring my UVs back I'll press T to get rid of these tool panels because we don't need them and N to get rid of this one. And you can see all the UVs overlapping each other, that's not going to work. If your UVs overlap at all, if you paint on one area such as 
this area coming around here, the other area that's on top of it will also be painted as well. So they've got to all be looking at different parts of the 2D texture. So now I can press U, and instead of Smart UV Project, I press Unwrap. And we've got an OK Unwrap over here. Let's take a closer look at our options of Unwrap first. We've got the margin here. Can you remember the margin is the distance between the islands? We can't have them so close to each other because if you paint on one area, it might spill out onto the other area and that's known as bleed. So at the margin, we'll put that up to 0 0.005 and see what that looks like. I think we had it at 0 0.01, so I think that worked out quite well for the other one. And that's looking a bit better, excellent. Now I want to be able to see what the seams look like on my object, so I'll drag another window down from here, so up to the corner, click and drag, and I'll change this to the shader editor. Press N to get rid of that panel, create a new material, and I'll create a new texture. And someone was asking me about the color grid, well you can just come down to here, where generated type, and you can change that to color grid, and press OK, and that will produce a color grid for you. Now I can bring this into my shader editor, so shift A to add texture and image texture, bring that up there. I'll just zoom in on that and I'll turn snapping off, that's making it snap to the grid. I'll hook that up and I'll just choose my untitled color grid there. We can't see anything yet because if I come across here I need to be on material preview mode. Ah, oh, now this is interesting, it's not appearing but it is actually appearing on this object here. So that's the active object, and that's what I added this new material to. So it didn't add it to the whole gun. That's not a problem. If I go back into object mode, and still with that one as the active object, I can press Control L and link up the materials, and it's all got that same material. So if you select all your objects, and the one you select last is the active object, and press Control L, you can make links between the objects, and I want to link the materials. Okay, so at the moment, it's not looking too bad, but we can see the texture kind of distorts in here. It squishes in and then comes out. And this letter is quite big, whereas this letter is small. And we want them to be fairly uniform. And it's all going a bit funny in here. And we call that stretching. And also, I've still got my mirror on. So we're getting exactly the same texture from one side to the other. And that's what I mean by the fact that you can use the mirror. And if I go back to edit mode, the UVs will be perfectly on top of each other. So this side here is on top of this side, so they're sharing that texture space. And if I paint onto this side, it will paint onto that side because they're overlapping. And in the case of a mirror, if you want to save space like this, then you want them to overlap. And it will work fine in games and things like that, but I want to be able to change from one side to the other to add variation. So eventually I will apply that mirror and then unwrap again. But I want to sort the UVs out first so there's no stretching and skewing like this. So I'm going to close this texture for the moment so I can see my UVs a bit easier and drag up my shader editor so we can get a clear view. Now if you want to know which part of your model is on which UV island, you can select an area of it such as box selecting like this or just one edge. It doesn't matter if you're in edges, faces or vertices. And you can click this button here which is UV sync selection. If I click that, you can actually see the area that I've chosen. Therefore, we know that this area here is this big island here. Now, because I haven't got a seam in the middle here anywhere, it's kind of stretching around the corner and trying to turn this into a 2D texture, but it does, like I say, go round a corner here. And this bit's quite a lot wider than this bit, so it's trying to incorporate that into a 2D texture, and it's stretching. We can actually see the stretch if I go up to the overlays up here, there's a display stretch option and that will highlight them in blue like this. Dark blue means there's no stretch, light blue means there's some stretch and green is a definite no. Let's just quickly see where these stretched areas are. So if I select that and then press full stop on my numpad or period key on my numpad, it will zoom into it. Just zoom out just a touch and we can see it's this bolt here and that's really not unwrapped very well at all and you can actually start to see the pixels a bit there from how distorted it's gone. So we really don't want that sort of stretching. So let's sort that out first. If I zoom into this area, let's imagine this was some sort of drinks can and someone had stamped on the top of it and it had become squashed down like this. Well, basically that's what's happened. It's trying to interpret what we've got here into a 2D and it's messed it up completely. But if I mark a scene down here, so select that, Control E, mark scene, 
and maybe mark a seam around the top here. Control E, mark seam. And I'll just select this area. So I'll press L over that to link select. So it's just that. And then I'll press U to unwrap. Let's see what sort of unwrap it's done. So you can see it's unwrapped it here. It's over the top of the other ones, but it's dark blue. So there's no stretching, that's great. It's unwrapped it to the whole of the box. That's because I selected it on its own. And can you see how small the numbers are now? So if they're small numbers, it's taking up a lot of room on your texture space. Whereas these big numbers, they're a bit more even, and that's because their islands are much smaller. So anywhere we've got big numbers, you need to check and make sure there's not a problem. Like the areas around here, which are quite big, they're taking up less texture space, and therefore you might get problems when you paint on them with pixelation. But the unwraps work very well because there's no stretching, because it's dark blue. We've got the problem that it's on top of the other one and we can sort that out now. Well, if we select everything and press unwrap again, it's spread it out. I think it's there and there. So as soon as you select everything and unwrap, it puts it all into the box evenly. Okay, so as another example, I'll click on this one over here. I'll press period key and it's this object here. So we need to unwrap that. This is like a box, so we can probably select this edge here, here, here and here. Control E, mark seams, select everything, unwrap. And then if I select that again and press full stop or period key on my UV editor, I can then go into that object. And you can see it's blue, so there's no stretching. And basically there's a seam down here, a seam down here and down here, so it can kind of splay out without a problem. It's like a cardboard box that needs to be taped up. Okay, so I'll zoom out a bit and I'll choose one of these light blue areas that aren't so bad, maybe this one here, and then press full stop to see where that is. Okay, so that's this shape going around here. So if I go to face mode to show you which area that is, you can see it there. Now, because these inside edges have a smaller radius than this outside edge, it's kind of bending it and squishing it like this. It's not causing a huge amount of stretch. Yes, we can see the pixels there, but that's about even with these other areas around here. We could come in and go to edge mode, mark a seam down here. So control E, mark seams, select everything, unwrap. And if I select these faces again, three to go to face mode, select those faces, you can see it's now blue and unwrapped, but we have an extra seam. And that's what you have to think about in texture painting. That's not really a problem, but the more islands you have, the more space you need to have around your islands, and if you wanted to take this image across into Photoshop and start painting it, if you have less islands, it's much easier to paint on, it's much easier to see what's going on. The more islands you have, the more confusion there is. So you've got to weigh that up. In this case, uh, we can put in lots of cuts and that's absolutely fine, but it still is good practice to have as fewer islands as possible. Okay, so I'm going to go around and start sorting out some of these areas. So I'll click on the item, full stop on my numpad or period key, to go to that point and then start marking in some seams. So just quickly for this one, it's not too bad. So I cut the edge off here because that's a really big area, but there's still a bit of squashing and stretching going on in here. So maybe I need another cut in here. So control E, mark seams, select all and U to unwrap. And it's getting a bit better. What we can also do is when I select all U to unwrap, we can try out a different method of unwrapping, which is at the moment we're using angle-based, if we use conformal, that can sometimes straighten out these edges along here. That can help you a lot, especially if you're going to take this image across into Photoshop and start painting, or any drawing program for that matter. I can't remember what the sort of algorithm is for these things, but conformal tends to be sort of straighter, more for hard surface modeling. Angle-based is more for organic modeling. So we'll probably stick to conformal because this is a hard surface and hard surfaces are objects that have hard edges. Organic being sort of monsters, humans, plants, or whatever it might be. Okay, so I'll keep going around and checking on my object. Now I keep pressing U to unwrap and unwrap. There is an option under UVs, which is live unwrap. Now this sometimes works on me, sometimes doesn't, but it should be that whenever you mark a seam in here and cut out an island, it should automatically unwrap it. I haven't found that working particularly well recently. But let's go around and see if I mark a seam there. No, didn't work. <laughs> Not sure. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Maybe someone can tell me why it doesn't work for me at the moment. So any areas that are light blue, like areas like this, we need to go in 
and check on. And to kind of fix the stretch, we just have to go in and mark a few more seams, sometimes creating new islands, sometimes just splitting it up. Now this is an interesting one. This area here, can you see the overlap of these points? So it's a bad unwrap. It's tricky to see, so I'll go into object mode, just select that object and isolate it with forward slash and then go into edit mode. So we can just see that there. Now I thought because I'm cutting these up that they'd splay out all right, but they really haven't and it hasn't worked. What you must avoid is overlap like this. So what I'm going to do is grab the middle edges here. You can do it in the UV editor as well, and it appears over here. Control E, mark seams, and select everything and unwrap. Obviously it's gonna take up all the texture space at the moment, but now I can see how that unwrap is working and whether it's working. It's a bit of a problem. Gaps like this are not great. Because remember I was talking about islands and if they're too close, you get problems. Well, you'll get the same if you have tiny gaps like this. Let's just see what that is. So I'll select those edges and see where that is on my shape. I'll press full stop to find it. Oh, it's at the top there. And it's creating a seam down there and spreading this one out and this one out just like this. So I'm going to have to take away these seams, I think. So control E, clear seams. Again, unwrap them. You can see there's a bit of stretching there now, but it really is minimal. It's not in a place that's going to cause too much problems. So I'll just leave it like that and it'll be nicer to paint. So a little bit of light blue like this won't make too much difference. Okay, I'm back into object mode, out of isolation mode, and you can see all those tiny numbers now because if I select everything and go to edit mode, you can see they overlap each other. So I can sort that out, U to unwrap, unwrap, and it didn't work because I didn't select everything. So A to select all, U to unwrap and unwrap. Still not sure what's happening with that live unwrap and why that's not working. Okay, so you can start to see that I'm splitting up and we're getting lots of islands now, which again, depending on what you're doing, might not be optimal. But in this case, because we're texture painting, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And that's why it's okay for us. If we were bringing in textures, such as a wood texture for the handle, we'd want that to be unwrapped without too many seams on it because you would start to see the joins between the different islands. But because we're texture painting, you won't see it. Okay, so I'll just tidy up the last few. These light green spots here are going to cause us problems, whereas these sort of bluey areas aren't too bad. So I'll just sort the light green areas out. To be fair, this probably won't cause much problems either because we can hardly see that area. But I'll cut it up just to make sure we don't have to worry about the seams so much, so we might as well. And that's why I often use a smart UV project to save time. So I'll go around and fix a few more. Now here there's a fair bit of stretch and distortion. You can see the distortion that it's causing. It's really not a huge amount. It would make a big difference if we weren't texture painting, but we're not really seeing any pixels, so we're probably okay with that. So as I said before, long thin lines like this can cause you slight problems and you can see the stretching that's happening on my UVs. Also, this is an end gone I've got in here. So if I go to the face, it's this one here and you can see it's got an extra cut in there. It's not really making a huge amount of difference. It's distorting it a bit. You could tidy it up by actually adding a cut in here. So going from this one to this one and joining those. Let's just quickly see what difference that makes. Not a great deal. It's a little bit of difference, but not much. So if I undo that, so you can see it adds a bit of distortion even, so it really isn't helping at all. The way you would sort this out if you had to is adding a loop cut down the middle here and just cleaning up the mesh from there. Let's see what difference it makes if I actually take away this one. So control X and it's actually less distortion if I take that one away. So it's causing more of a problem than it's solving. However, when I put this into a game engine, it will automatically make those triangles. So it is best that we put them in for now so we know exactly what it's going to look like in the game engine. So I'll undo that and I will make the cut down here and I'll unwrap it all again. So it's not particularly clean when it comes to this texture on here, but that will be absolutely fine when we texture paint. So don't worry too much about that. If you're desperate to sort the stretch out, then you can mark a seam around here and unwrap that and you can see there's no stretch now, but it creates two big islands, one here and one here. So hopefully you can see from this, one, the difficulties that you have with unwrapping, trying to sort out stretch whilst keeping the islands to a minimum, and it all depends on what you're doing. 
If you're unwrapping and you're using textures you've got from online, like PBR textures or something like that, you have to be really careful with your seams and therefore you might have a bit more stretching. Whereas for texture painting we can have more islands and therefore less stretching, but you do have more seams and therefore more chance of kind of bleed where they go over the edges, which you have to watch out for. I'll talk a bit more about bleed in later episodes, but hopefully this is giving you some sort of insight into the unwrapping process. And you can see here that this is getting close to our automatic unwrap, because as we cut it up trying to sort out the stretching, we get more islands, and therefore we might as well have done a UV Smart Project. You can compare at any time, so if I select all, U, and then Smart Project, I'll turn the island margin up, and press OK. It's a fair bit smaller, fair few more islands, and do remember that this is mirrored, so this will be on the other side as well. And actually there's a bit of stretching that we ought to sort out as well. So it is a bit cleaner if I select all, U to unwrap, and go to my unwrap. There's much fewer islands, and there's a bit less stretching. So there's the advantage of doing it manually. I'll still go in and tidy a few areas up. And try not to speed the footage up too much so you can still just about see what I'm doing, but in places you might just want to mark a few seams to spread things out. Okay, so having a look around, there's minimal stretch now. This sort of color is okay, we should be fine with that. But our job here isn't finished because I have to apply my mirror and then unwrap, unless I want to draw on one side and then it appear on the other, which you might think would save you time, but you can do that in the texture painting process anyway, and then you can take off the mirror and start painting some variation on one side if you've unwrapped without the mirror. So I'm going to go into object mode and go into the mirror and apply it. I think this one has a mirror as well, so apply that. Okay, so now we're ready for our proper unwrap, select all, into edit mode, select all again, U to unwrap, and unwrap. Oh no, it's all gone wrong. And that's because when I applied the mirror, it didn't create that seam down the middle that we had. So it's easy to fix. We can Alt, left click, selecting everything down the middle. There's a few separate items, so we'll have to get those as well. You don't have to, these bolts don't necessarily need a cut right down the middle, but just for speed's sake, I'll do that. You could just cut up one half of this cylinder and it will splay out quite well. But like I say, for speed's sake, we'll cut it right down the middle. So Control E, mark seams, select all, U to unwrap, and unwrap. And there we go. I'll just Control Spacebar over this screen and zoom into it. And it's a good idea just to take a look around, make sure the unwrap hasn't done anything crazy and that your islands aren't too close to each other. And that's all looking good. If you want to move any of your islands around, let's say these ones are slightly too close, you need to turn off UV sync selection and then come to the island selection mode here and you can select islands and press G to grab. Make sure you have UV sync selection turned off to do that to just edit within here. Okay, control spacebar to go back and we're finally ready with our unwrap. Now, yes, that was a bit of a long video there, but I've tried to be thorough with it it's probably not going to be a very popular video because of the length, and that is one of the things that I have to look out for when I'm doing these videos. And I'm a slave to the YouTube audience in a sense that I have to make things seem short. But I know there's lots of people out there that want a real detailed look at UV unwrapping, so there it is. Hopefully you're still enjoying this series. Thanks for all your support, those that watch an advert, those that donate, or those that sign up to my Patreon. It's really appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.